Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, so just by way of introduction, I, I know most people do not know me uh, because I haven't taught the, the first and the second years in a while now. I'm teaching the third and the graduate students. So I'll introduce myself. My name is um, Samuel. And um, my office, I'm in uh, room 208. Um, that is the second floor in the statistics building. That's where you find my office. Um, I'm your course advisor, statistics level 300 students. And so my doors are always very open. Um, I don't really have a specific date when I meet students, but anytime I thought you'd want to with me my and uh, you can just pass by if i'm free or i have less time i'm able to attend to you to um, address any issues or concerns that you may have um, i'm told that you also have certain questions that um, you wanted me to help you or to answer them for you so before um uh, so what I can do is that I would, first of all, allow, I mean, open um, the floor for questions. If you have any specific uh, questions that you want me to answer, um, then you can bring them forward. And then we see how it goes. Does that, does that sound well with everyone? Yes, please. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can type them on the chat box or you can just unmute and then um, speak so that we can all hear you. Yes, Richard, Richard, you can go ahead. Uh -huh. Hello, sir. Um, please, I wanted to know if um, data mining is a compulsory course you have to register for combined major statistics students. For the combined? Economics, yes. Yes, please. If data mining is compulsory. Uh, the is, the, is that course part of the core courses or is it a core and elective course? It wasn't, it's an elective course. It's an elective course for level 300. Yes, please. Level 200. Yeah, level so 200. That is level 200, right? Yes, please. But you are not in level 300. Yes, sir. And so you are asking if you can go back to level 200 to do it? No, no, no. I'm asking if it's compulsory you have to do it before we complete or something like that. No, if, if it's an elective course, all the elective courses, I think they are optional. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, as long as you have other electives that you have done, um, I, I don't think it's necessarily uh, do that particular elective for you to graduate. But okay. it's electives that I always advise uh, statistics students uh, to do because I mean it's um, it's very practical and um, in terms of the job market, it's one of the skill sets that uh, most organizations would require. Uh, so if you are able to do such an elective, I think um, it will be fine. But I don't think it's compulsory as long as you meet the the number of credit hours for the electives that you need. Okay, sure. Yeah. Th thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, there is um, a question on the chat. Um, so is it compulsory to take the linear, linear algebra, even though you've dropped mathematics? Yes, so this is a very important question and thanks you for asking, President. Um, so 
the algebra, I think there are two versions. We have one of the algebra, which is um, starts course, and then the linear algebra, which is from the mass side. Um, in the past, the challenge that we've had uh, with students who are doing the statistics program and, and opting not to do the algebra has been that um, the, a number of them have always want to go outside to do um, programs like uh, statistics, uh, masters in statistics, masters in uh, mathematics and all that. And usually if you do not have linear algebra, if you do not have evidence that you have done linear algebra, you limit your chances in terms of graduate admissions. You will not even be admitted at all. Sometimes they will come back and they will tell you that, um, so calculus, linear algebra, these two courses are very, very calculus one and calculus two. Then the linear algebra, they are like mandatory courses that you must have if you uh, be admitted into, especially most of the US uh, universities. We've had uh, students who have had very good grades. Even one of them was our validated. Uh, uh, he, she was the best student from, from this department, but she never had uh, any of those courses, like algebra, and then I think she missed one of them. I, I don't remember whether it was algebra or calculus. All the schools were willing to admit her, and she did not have the linear algebra, so it became a very big challenge. So I'm advising all of you, it's either it, those who are, who are mass oriented, who wants to, so it's for that reason that the department decided to introduce uh, methods of linear algebra, so that at least those who do not want to go into the mass side can at least do those algebra courses that are required for you to do statistics. There are certain courses in statistics that if you don't, if your linear algebra is not good, you can't do it. Like uh, multivariate methods, which you do in your final year. So when, when I had taught those, that course, in, uh, I usually start with linear algebra, but because it is not on your transcripts that you have done linear algebra, even if you apply for a course or in statistics and they find that you have not done linear algebra, uh, they won't believe you if you tell them that, Yes, I did that course as a uh, as part of my multivariate course. You know, they still want to see evidence that this is appearing on your transcripts. So you, it, it is that is why it's optional. Those who want to go into the um, uh, trajectory, it will be best to take the linear algebra that is offered by the mass uh, people. Those who want to go to the statistics um, trajectory, um, the methods of linear algebra. Would be so that's why that course is start uh, uh, the code is starts something something something. So um, my advice for you is that try and do. If you are in this uh, particular program, statistics major, um, the combined major, and even if you are minoring in uh, statistics, you never know what the future holds for you. Maybe in the future you change your mind that I don't want to do economics anymore. I want to go into statistics, and then. Um, apply, they'll tell you that you don't have linear algebra. I, I don't want that to be your story. So at least make sure that linear algebra, calculus one, calculus two, those type of courses are part of your transcripts. I hope that um, answers your question, Priscilla. And any ask a similar question. Okay, so I assume that um, there is no answer. Uh, there's no more question relating to that. If there is, mute yourself and speak, okay? If you have a questions, just unmute yourself. Let's make it very interactive. Um, there is a question on um, statistical inference. I think you have a question. My advice would be that uh, contact your course advisor to be sure that if it's an if it's an elective, elective courses are optional, so you can decide to do it or not to do it. Okay, um, just that you 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 should be motivated by uh, why you want to do certain courses. Um, Statistical inference. If I were you, my advice would be that it's one of the electives that I would really wish that you do it. Okay. 
So it's an elective, so it's maybe optional for you. But my advice would be that it's an elective that will be very good for an actuarial science um, because actuarial science, <laughs> I mean, it's a combination of several courses, mathematics, statistics, and um, um, economics, finance, you know, it's a whole bunch of you do if you are an actuarial science student. Statistical inference is like the foundation, one of the, um, I mean, it's a build up on probability, um, which gives you a very strong foundation uh, for your statistics uh, component of your actuarial science. So if you can do it, my advice would be that take it, okay? And um, it, will, it, will, it will be of help to you. Okay, so that's all I can say about that. All courses, they are optional. So you, you decide which one you want to offer, okay? Unless there is none. But if you are doing a, uh, if you are doing a children's science program, statistics inference, if it's an elective course that you can do, my advice would be that um, take that chance and do that course, okay? So please, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. So please, do you need abstract algebra as a combined student uh, statistics and economics? Do you need abstract algebra on your transcript before you can graduate? Um, you said uh, which program again? I'm combining stats with economics. Combine stats and, and a course. Uh, no, you may not need um, you may not need uh, abstract algebra. But if you have uh, uh, the other algebra, because it's you are combining with statistics, for example, the linear algebra or the um, the meta linear algebra would be good for you, As, because you never know in economics you may decide that oh your grade is good and there are opportunities available in stats. Um, if you have such, uh, the algebra and you don't even have the abstract algebra, I think you still be good to go. Okay. 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 Sir. Thank you very much. All right. Sir. Sir. Yes, Joyce. Sir, please, Sir, please. Um, the maximum number of um, credit hours to register for is 19. I'm doing combined major, um, a course and statistics. And okay. I'm to register for three for a course, three for stats, one for math, and then making seven. Okay. But I cannot register seven courses mm -hmm. because when I register, it will exceed the number of creditors. So I've already registered fully six. So I don't know whether I can still add the one. So I registered two stats courses, three accounts, and then linear algebra. So I'm level one statistics, and I don't know how to add it because um, it exceeds the number of. Um, okay, so let, let me let me take some notes. So you have already registered two stats courses. Which, yes. which other math course have you not been able to register? The, the math I register for only linear. Which I one? Left one start, linear algebra. Linear algebra. Yes, please. Oh, I left okay. start out because I couldn't register. Because if I register, I can't continue the registration. Hello. Oh, and the stats courses, you already have. Um, you have I registered. But we see um, sampling survey. So someone told me when we resume, I can add one, the statistical inference one, I can add it to it. Uh, okay. Yeah, then if, if there is that option to be able to add, I'm not I'm not very sure about that. But um, um I, I will note it down and find out from the exam officer and then uh, probably communicate that to you. You said your combination is what? A course and statistics. So a I'm course and statistics. Seven courses. Okay, so you have, yeah, so in that case, you need three courses in math, uh, in stats, and three courses in, um, in a, a course. course. And yes. one in math, linear algebra. And one in math, which is linear algebra. Yeah. But now, the, um, now that we have the methods in linear algebra, okay? okay. If, if you take the methods in linear algebra in addition to the two start courses, then you should have met the three start courses, right? No. The, the start one courses are for two. Again? 
I register for two, the probability distribution and statistical inference one. So I wasn't uh -huh. able to add a sampling survey. Yeah, but because when I added to the is that you do uh, maths, uh, three stats, three accounts, and then one maths. Yes, please. And the maths course is the linear algebra. Yes, please. Okay, so, yes, yeah, so my thinking is that the reason why they wanted you to do that, um, that to take that linear algebra was because they were making linear algebra compulsory. Okay. okay. And that was the reason why a lot of people were having challenges, and that is why we introduced the methods in linear algebra. Okay. Are you, are you following me? Yes, please. Okay. If you take the stats one, which is the methods in linear algebra that we are of that is being offered in the stats course, then you may not need that linear algebra, which is in mass again. I'm not I'm not registering for the methods in what you just said. I'm just um registering for probability, statistical inference, and sampling survey. So I'm left with only sampling survey to add. Mm. Okay, so you, I'll find out if there is that extra option to add one extra course because I think that it's, it should be possible because people can do more than the minimum number of credits that they need. Okay, so procedure in, in um, the procedure that you need in order to add the course, I'm not uh, quite familiar with. So I can, I, can, um, I can find out about that and get back to you. Okay, thank you. Hello, sir. Yes. So, so my question is related to a. So does that mean that you can uh, exceed your credit number of hours that they give it to you? Uh, uh, it's possible you can exceed, uh, but the procedures may be different. I think somebody indicated in the chat that I think if you register six courses, you can add, you can add late one later. Okay to work so i think that should be possible so you should it's um we can all find out how how that is done it's maybe the procedure maybe now you are not able to register it but uh, maybe after a while it's possible that you can add extra courses is that clear yes sir. okay hello sir good morning good morning this is our team speaking um Please, I want to know something. Mm -hmm. When you look at the handbook for College of Basic and Applied Sciences for actual science students, mm -hmm. the, when you check the actual science courses, we have major, minor actual science and single major actual science, but there's no combined mm -hmm. major actual science courses. So what do we do as actual science students who are doing combined major actual math? Um, Hmm. The actual science uh, program, I think there is um, the, the handbook that is coming up, there is a little bit of issue with it. And so I would not, I would say that you should not go strictly by the handbook. And so um, I would advise you to meet your course advisor to direct you on that. What I know or what has come to my attention is that for the actual science program, Initial thinking was that you can combine it like actuarial, like you have mentioned, single major, um, combined major, and all that. The challenge is that there's the graduate school, uh, the uh, university leadership thinks that actuarial science is a already a professional course. It's really customized course. So there is no reason why you want to combine it with other because already by its nature. It's already a combination of several courses. So th the combination doesn't make sense. You, you understand what I mean? So, so it's what they, they are actually proposing. If you are doing actuarial, then you are doing complete actuarial science. Because actuarial science by its nature is already a combination of several courses. You'll be taking courses in economics, in finance, in mathematics, in statistics. So it's already a, a special program. So there is no need to have a major minor and a, a minor and combined major and all that, okay? So um, I don't know what they have decided on finally. So speak to your, the, the actual science course advisor 
to be advise you on that. So, so I want to correct you on something. And um, please, our lecturer said when you do combined major, there are a lot of scholarship available to us. But if you do single major in actuarial, you have to write professional exams before you get a scholarship. So that's why some of us decided to do a combined major. No, but who, who, you said who said that? Um, lecture perpetual and um, no, but I don't think it's uh, it's because of scholarship. Okay, I, I'm not sure it's has to do with any scholarship at all. Um, the actually it's there are certain electives that even in the actual science program there are electives that you can take, right? And some of the electives are still optional. Okay, elective courses are optional. So depending on the ones that. If you were doing a major, a combined major, the courses that you are, for example, if there is CACLOS as one of the electives, and you feel that you want to have that part as part of your actuarial science program, I think the program allows that flexibility. Okay. So I'm not sure it's just about, I, I, I'm, I don't know of any organization that is giving exemptions for uh, people who are doing combined major. I'm not aware of that. All right, um, I, I can confirm. I don't know the status of that the program now because, like I've mentioned, it has come to it. It has been discussed um, uh, in a previous meeting that that particular combination uh, combination programs should not uh, be encouraged because actuarial science itself it's it, it's a, a multidisciplinary area. So there are already a lot of combinations that you can do. Yes, and it, it's not because of the title that you have combined major that makes you more that makes uh, scholarship opportunities available for you or require you to have some exemptions. No, it depends on how even the type of electives that you choose will help you to um, um, get uh, funding uh, opportunities. Please thank you. Okay. We, we can discuss um, when school reopen and you still want to have, I mean, you can come around and then um, I, can, I can lead you to um, uh, um, the, the exam officer and, and discuss it. Okay. Okay. Um, hello, sir. Yes. Um, please, just to get clarified about something with what my colleague just said. Um, yes, yeah, definitely um, our lecturer made mention about the combination and a single major and was also yeah. saying that probably having the combination gives a bit advantage, but then just like you are saying, it yeah. doesn't strictly open as to the scholarships restricting that of the single majors. Yes. Depending on your electives and everything, you're exposed to it. But Precisely. before the actuarial science and maths combination was introduced. I remember, um, was it the HOD or the, one of our lecturers said that usually, so far the past graduates who did the single major actu actuarial science mm. retained um, to do some other math courses while trying to further in the profession. Uh, is why yes. they wanted to introduce the combination of actuarial science and math so that some of these math courses that people are not able to take, people will be able to take them now so that if they are feathering in the actual profession, they wouldn't have any restrictions or would have to come back to take such math courses. Um, yes. That's why we, yes, please. Yes. But just like you're saying to, it has great. come to our yes. view that they're trying to work on the combined major and make it just single major, yes. just like you're saying, yes. Yes, and so that you are able to take those mass courses. So you would see that those people who have had those challenges, it is not because of the, the combined major, it is because they were lacking other courses that were prerequisites. So like the linear algebra and the calculus that I mentioned. I mean, those courses, they are supposed to make it compulsory for everyone. But you see, some of them, because they are electives and students sometimes do not want to do the hard things because People, students are afraid that they will go and do calculus in mass, and it is very hard. They hear stories from their friends 
So what they do is that they will, they will want to, you know, they try to, students try to avoid some of those courses by forgetting that they are needed, even if you have it on your transcript and the result is not good. Okay, maybe you have a B, maybe when you wanted an A from, an, uh, uh, you can get an A from a different course. Uh, it is better to have that B and have that course on your transcript than go and take a course that you are going to get an A and yet, you know, it doesn't um, help you when um, uh, you are looking for graduate opportunities. Okay, so you have to be, that is why some of these courses, they, they, I mean, everyone should have, if you, there's nothing you take away from this uh, call, just make sure by the time you have completed your calculus one and calculus two, your linear algebra, whether it is the methods in linear algebra or whichever course, make sure that it's appearing on your transcript. Okay, it applies to all of them, whether you are even minoring or whatever. My advice would be that make sure that those courses are on your transcripts. Okay, because they are the foundation for many quantitative programs. There are several, sometimes you even be surprised that when you want to go and do finance, financial mathematics, okay, and you don't have linear algebra, you will not be given that opportunity. So make it a, 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 a must that at least for these three courses that I have mentioned, linear algebra, calculus one, calculus two, and if you, the calculus, if you can add any other calculus course in it, well and good. I mean, it will make your actual science really strong, you know, so that when you are applying for, and it's not just the actual science people who have had challenges, even the statistics people who dodge those linear algebra, they are also limited in the options that are available for them at the graduate level. Yeah, but let me let me confirm something. I think the uh, exam officer is around. Let me see whether he's in the office. I'll be right back. Let me see whether he can comment on the final status of the actuarial um, combinations. So I'll be back. <laughs> Okay, hello, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. Yes, um, Dr. Luis is in a meeting, so he's not able to uh, join. But um, yes, so for the actual science people, I will still, my advice will still be, I think Dr. Menka is your course advisor. So let's um, talk to him also and see what he says, okay? So he said, he's out like to ask, how important is research recreations for stat major students? And is it advisable to select analysis one in calculus of several variables as electives? From what introduction? Um, how important is introduction to research operations for stat major students? And is it advisable to select analysis one? and calculus of several variables as electives. Oh, okay. Um, so those are also electives um, 
Yes, so I think one of the courses that I missed in my, uh, my list of courses that are really important is the analysis. So I'm updating my list at algebra calculus one and calculus two. Analysis is also one of them that if those who are especially doing the major, uh, the major and then combined majors, uh, if you also add analysis to your course, I think it's also very, very helpful if that option is available. I'm sure so every course is important, but it depends on how you are able to blend them uh, very well. So if you're able to do that, then that's very helpful. The calculus of several variables, um, I think that if you have done the calculus one and calculus two, it is so much as the course that you, it's a must to, okay? If you have done the calculus one and calculus two, um, it, I think that that should be enough. And then if you have added the linear algebra and analysis, but if, for example, for those that want to combine with um, um, maths, if you are combining with maths, then obviously the calculus with several variables would be uh, something that you have to do as well. Okay. Um, operations research. Uh, the operations research uh, for those who are doing the stats, whether you are monitoring in stats, major stats, I think it's a it's a course that um, it's a new course that is being introduced, and I've looked at the content of that program. I think it will be very, very nice for, um, for the STAR students. Uh, the reason why I'm saying that is that, you know, all the things that I'm talking about, I've always been using uh, graduate school when you are applying for graduate process, you know, because I'm thinking ahead. My understanding is that when you do program in statistics, it gives you a foundation. So it, it doesn't, the program that we are running here is more theoretical and it doesn't put you into the, um, the job market immediately, okay? Statistical inference, all those uh, courses are theoretical, they are methodological. They give you the foundation for you to be able to do uh, uh, certain programs at the graduate level. Okay, so that's the things that our program lack because Uh, let me switch off my video. And um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, please we can hear you. Okay, so I don't know where where you had the last bits that. Um, yeah, but I was saying that the there are some courses that we have introduced uh, into our program to give the practical feel of what statistics is really used for, and the operations research course. Um, going through the content is more of data mining as well. So it will give you a lot of hands-on training that will be very useful for you. If, for example, um, you complete uh, um, uh, your first degree and then, I mean, you get a job, it's one of the that you can use to show off to know that, yeah, I've really done statistics. So 
it all depends on uh, you, the individual. It's an elective, and uh, my my motivation for to want to do such a course would be because it's going to give me a lot of uh, practical, hands-on training, very useful immediately that I finish school. So if, for example, you get a research institute, demonstrate to them that you are able to work very well with data because you have taken the operations research course, then I think that would be very uh, fantastic. I hope that answers you. Yes, sir. Yes, any more questions? Yeah, yes, sir. Can you enlight more on the actual science elective that we should do? The actual science. Yes. yes, so the actual science, I don't know much, much about the content. That's why I've advised that you speak to your course advisor. There is a course advisor for actual science as well. Okay. So I, I don't want to speak on something that I'm not very informed about. The, the few that I know is what I. rep so that you, they can organize uh, another section uh, with your course advisor because he'll be able to really um, in, um, uh, update you on some of the new changes that have come into the actual science program. Okay. 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 Yes, any more questions? Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. I hear you. Um, my question is back to the one I think Joyce, Joyce, yes, I'm sure Joyce asked about um, combined major economics. Some up to 21. So um, I would yeah. like to know whether if we will be penalized because it seems all of us. And then for those who also have outstanding UGRCs, that means that it will probably exceed the 19, which is 21 and 24. So I don't know how best um, we should go about that. Yeah, I think we, we did answer that, that um, some have even shared that it's possible that you can add, you can increase that uh, 19 credit hours, but this has to be done later on. So we, you just have to know the procedure uh, involved in adding. So I had noted that down that it's something that I was going to find out and I'll let them share with you uh, what the procedure is because I don't know how your registration system work. So I'll find out from the exam officer. And then if there are any special procedures that you need to follow before you can add on new elect courses to increase your credit hours, you are able to do it. I know from okay. uh, places that it's possible, you can always do any credit hours at, at all that you, you can do, as long as you have the capabilities. But uh, I'm not sure you are restricted to the 19. It's very possible that you can add, uh, uh, if you don't have a special receipts, then I think it's possible that you can increase your number of credits. But there will be a procedure uh, you have to follow in order to add those new, new courses. Yes, sir. So, but um, the, the 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 fact is that we have added it. Most people too can do that on um, our portals. But just that the total credit hours that is required will be nineteen. But you yeah. write the exams and then they will grade you. So I wanted to be clear on that fact. We can add it on the MIS, but I don't know whether if we will be penalized when we are about to graduate. That okay, we ask you to do nineteen and then you did twenty one. No, you cannot be penalized. Add it on Whatever be the case, you, the you actually benefit, not penalized. No, no, there is no penalization if you exceed your total number of credits. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, any more questions? Okay, let me go through my, my list. Um, I think there was also a question on, um, uh, on the job opportunities for um, doing these programs that like statistics and all those stuff. 
the, the opportunities for this program that you have enrolled in is one of the best. I mean, I have always told people in my class that even me, my children, if my children can follow my advice, I always tell them that they should come and do um, statistics or mathematics or a combination of these courses um, in, their, in their life, if they really want to be successful in life. And courses are really, really important. The reason why I'm saying that is that these are courses that gives you the widest, I mean, opportunities possible that you can think of. People with this background, mathematics, statistics, have like, the opportunities are endless. I, I don't see anywhere that you cannot, if you really want to transition to, you cannot go to. Uh, I, I usually use the example as a business school. If you go to the business school right now, the finance department, you'll be surprised that almost all the lecturers, I can say half of them, their background is either statistics or mathematics. You've heard a lot of our Professor Lord Mensa so much all the time. He speaks on, uh, he's on radio speaking about um, our economy and blah, 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 yes. blah. His background is, is, is pure maths. He did pure maths at KNU, you know? So it just tells you like the, the, the scope that you can, that, I mean, you're rich when you have this background. So those, there are some people, somebody had, um, I think that there was a, a mail that somebody have sent, I think a second year student uh, has sent an email saying that um, he wanted to do uh, computer science and he has been given statistics and then he feel that it's it's he's useless he wants to stop the school and he's and i mean it was so i mean when i read that message i was like wow this person is speaking really out of ignorance and and i feel that we are not doing a good job in trying to let you guys understand some of the importance of the course some of these courses that you are doing okay I have just listed, um, I think I have captured a few areas that, um, I mean, this course that you are doing, even at the first degree, areas that you can divert into. Um, as I'm right now, my background, my first degree is mathematics. I did pure mathematics. I did all the topology and all of those things. Um, but I ended up after my first degree, I went in to do biostatistics. So my, I'm now, I'm professionally, so I'm known as a biostatistician. Um, and uh, I, had, I was someone who wanted to actually do medicine because um, when I was in SS, I was very good at biology. Um, I loved biology so much. Unfortunately, I applied to all the biology courses and I was denied. And the course they gave me was mathematics. So you can imagine someone who wanted to do a pharmacy, who wanted to do medicine, and then he applies to a program and then they give me mathematics, which is a course that I was, I never even chose among all courses that I had applied to do, you know? And then I just ended up there. So I would say that I ended up in mathematics by accident. Um, that is from my side, but for the, the reality was, I'm sure the admission committee, when they looked through my results, because I got an A in maths, and then I got a B in biology. So it, they felt like, well, this guy, He's really a mass person. Why does he want to do a biology? And I was put into mass. You know, least did I even know that biology and mathematics even have something in common. You know, I ended up when I, I received my scholarship to go and do biostatistics. Then I was like, wow. So uh, mathematics can really be applied in, in biology to solve biological problems. And then you find that they are a lot. The statistics you are learning, the mathematics that you are learning, it's to solve problems. And where are the problems coming from? The problems are coming from all the other disciplines. So you can find yourself working in any place that you want. There are several research institutions that are looking for assistance. If you have a background, if you've done, if you can play around with data, in fact, they need you a lot. As a statistician in all the ministries in Ghana, that collects data patients. Now you have heard about data science. Data science is now taking the whole the world. Now, if you want to type the, the, most, um, the most highly demanding uh, job right now, it used to be actuarial science, which was also uh, 
uh, like the top rank um, uh, jobs available in the world, you would find that in the first 10, all the most of the uh, professions that are there, it is only recently the Ebola virus, you know, uh, because of the, uh, the COVID, and uh, the biologists, I mean, they need more people to investigate into new agents to cure, blah, blah, blah. So uh, you would find that some of those biologists uh, positions are now coming to the top 10. But in the past, before prior to COVID, you would find that all the courses were courses that are quantitatively uh, quantitative based. Now data science is being, and in data science, we have several roles. You can either be a data analyst, you can become a data scientist, you can be, become a data engineer, you can be, become a database administrator, there are several, several, several opportunities that are available to you. Unfortunately, we don't have some of those opportunities uh, widely in Ghana, but I always tell people that don't limit yourself into just Ghana uh, or the, uh, the place that you found yourself. You know, be open-minded that, look, this course that I'm doing, I'm going to do it well. If you do these statistics courses and you do them very well, the opportunities are so much. Every year, statistics department, every, there is no year we don't have our students traveling outside because of scholarships. You go to the US, they are there. You go to Canada, there are so many of them. Most of them have finished their PhDs. I recently was speaking to one of them. He was actually my TA, and he's working with uh, um, Amazon. He got an, a very big offer in Amazon as an economist. He was from this statistics department. He's now an economist. He went to Simon Fraser uh, University. You know, so opportunities in this program that you are doing, whether you are doing a combination, as long as the combination includes mathematics and statistics in them or computer science, my friends, the opportunities are there. So don't think that this course is a punishment to you. Whoever put this course to you has really done more good to you than harm. And so make sure that you commit to doing it very well the only people who regret doing this course are people who don't want to study. If you, you finish this course, then you finish with a lower, even lower for Nukra, they are even so much needed. If you go to the business school, those who apply for business school to go and do finance, you won't believe that when they go there, our lower students who end up going to the business school to do finance, they become the best students. And we have had several of them. They, so, so the business school, for example, they like products that are coming from these departments because they know that the, that the quantitative knowledge that you acquire here gives you is unmatched, okay? So you have several opportunities that are available to all the, if, you, if they give you a finance book right now and you open it, you will see that it's just full of maths. It's just mathematics, it is statistics. RICS is just standard deviation that you have been learning and you know what it means. Uh, but if you go there, RICS, the way they are quantifying RICS, it's just the standard deviation that you are calculating, which you can just, I mean, you, you can just, uh, you know, calculate standard deviation within. But then the, those who are doing those um, 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 business courses and stuff like that, they find it very challenging to even define what a standard deviation is. Imagine you finding yourself in those fields, you know, it doesn't matter whether you are, so even if you, 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 you are not able to come up with a first class or a very good um, upper degree, and you even end up yourself with lower, I'm telling you that the opportunities are endless. All you just need to do is what? Identify the right course that is suitable for you. So you can become a financial analyst. You can become a business analyst. You can become a cost estimator. You can do uh, business intelligence. There are so, so, so many causes. Market research is full of statistics because who designs the tools that they use to go to the field to collect uh, the data? And who does the analysis? It is statisticians, okay? So opportunities in your program, it, I mean, right now, commit yourself to whichever combination you are doing, whether it's a combined major, make sure you're doing the right courses, make sure that you study very hard, you know, make sure that you, you are able to complete with a very good and solid um, uh, degree. And then you will never regret that you have, take, you have taken this course. I hope message across. Thank you. And if there are questions, um, 
ready to receive them. Over. Not at all. You are not disadvantaged. Uh, the reason why you are not disadvantaged, Abigail, uh, the economics and statistics, uh, you are not disadvantaged at all. Um, the fact that you are doing statistics, which allows you to also pick some of the, um, the quantitative courses. I mean, economics is mathematics. You bear with me that your micro your macroeconomics is just full of um, uh, um, um, statistics and graphs how to interpret graphs and all of them are statistics. And that is why we have ensured that at least even if you are doing the minor in statistics, there are certain key um, core courses that are required. They are there to give you that foundation that you need. Okay, so masters in economics, you are not disadvantaged at all if you do economic statistics program, okay. In fact, the economic statistics, you there, they, they will welcome you in the business school with open arms because they, they know that you are coming almost like uh, um, half cooked already. So you, you, they are just coming to polish you up and then you are still good to go. As then your, your mass is good, um, you, can, you, can add, you can excel in every area at all. Okay, over. Any questions? You can unmute yourself. And, um, and speak if you have uh, any question at all. Just feel free. Okay, so if there are no questions, then I will say that I wish you all the best. I wish the strike will end very soon, but our government is very stubborn. So um, we don't know when we are resuming. And um, I hope that this will be, that will be over with so that uh, we'll start meeting. I'm teaching the statistical inference um, this semester. So I'm sure I'll meet a lot of you in person and then we can have more interactions. Um, I've told you my office and then my office hours are open anytime at all you have any issues to discuss, uh, please feel free to, um, to pass by my office. And now that we are on strike, it's very hardly to find me here. But once we resume, I'm always around um, the department. Okay, so I wish you all the best and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And you are grateful for taking some time your busy schedules to attend to us and answer all our questions in our mind. We are very grateful. We are very grateful. Not Thank you, Emmanuel. I appreciate that. So on this note, then our meeting comes to an end. <laughs> so if you have further questions, you can follow up on sir in his office. He gave us his room number and all that so you can still follow up from there and then you have everything correct so god bless you and have a blessed day today bye